PlayStation 5, we have plenty of details surrounding the console now. It's coming out on November 12th in key markets, November 19th everywhere else. It's $500 for the version with the disk drive, $400 for the digital only version. And beyond all those details, a lot of people surely are wondering, you know, what's the console going to look like when I have it at home and put up on an entertainment center? Well, uh, we do have renders of the PS5 as shown here in the price and release date trailer. And this, you know, gives you a pretty good look at various angles of the console. But renders to me have always been very, you know, very pretty in their presentation, but not always uh, a good way to exactly gauge how a console will actually look like when it's sitting in your living room or wherever. And that brings us to today's news. There is uh, some leaked photos of the PlayStation 5, actual photos of the console fully manufactured, and I'd like to show you that today. But before we begin, a few details about the dimensions of the PlayStation 5 as uh, relayed here by news outlet The Verge in the September 16th article, noting that the PS5 is the biggest game console in modern history. And scrolling down here, you'll find the dimension. So it's 15.4 inches tall, 10.24 inches deep, and 4.09 inches wide. And if you want that in millimeters, you've got 390 millimeters tall, 260 millimeters deep, and 104 millimeters wide. Now, to really gauge the size of this thing, the editor put the dimensions of the upcoming Xbox consoles and the upcoming PlayStation consoles into a size comparison website. And this is the result that they got. So this is the Series X, this is the Series S, this is PS5 with disk drive, and this is the all-digital PS5. Right here, you can really see just how much substantially bigger the PS5 is, even compared to the Series X. The Series X is wider, though, whereas the PS5 is thinner, but it is deeper compared to the Series X, and it is definitely significantly taller. So for those looking for a size comparison, this is a, a good look at that. And then scrolling further down, you'll actually find some details about the weight of the system. So PlayStation 5 regular is 4.5 kilograms and PlayStation 5 digital edition is 3.9 kilograms. And for those wondering how that converts to pounds, well, 4.5 kilograms is roughly 10 pounds and 3.9 kilograms is roughly 8.6 pounds. Pretty hefty devices, but you know, not unmanageable. With all that in mind, I'd like to direct your attention to Twitter user Roberto Serrano, who posted the following images on Twitter and provided the following links to the official NCC website. NCC, for those who don't know, stands for Taiwan's National Communications Commission, and they essentially published a report on PlayStation 5, and alongside the report are images of the PS5 proper, and it gives you a good idea for how big this console is actually going to be. So let's go through these various images. So right here we have a front view of the PlayStation 5. You can see the uh, USB-C port right here. And then here we have a regular USB port. And then it's hard to tell from this image, but on the left here you've got the power button and the eject button for the disk drive. And if you go to the official PlayStation 5 price and release date trailer, it is actually possible to see those buttons in the render. So this is the power button, this is the eject button. And then right here you can actually see the measurement of the PlayStation 5 in millimeters. So if we draw a line here, it kind of uh, starts right around 40 millimeters and goes all the way up to about 400 and 30 millimeters, subtract 40 millimeters from 430 millimeters, and you do in fact get 390 millimeters, which is the official figure provided by PlayStation. Scrolling further down, we have a view of the top of the PlayStation 5, and here you can really kind of gauge the thickness with this flap area with the white portion here sticking out taking up a significant portion of that volume. And you can see right here that on the front of the PS5, it's thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom, but on the back of the PS5, it's thinner on the top and thicker 
at the bottom. And that's kind of what gives the PlayStation 5's design such a curved look. And scrolling further down, you actually find the back of the PlayStation 5, which looks much more industrial with all of these vents. So one of the things that Mark Cerny highlighted during that GC presentation of the PS5's architecture is the fact that Sony's well aware of the woes surrounding PlayStation 4's cooling system and how that console can sound like a jet engine when uh, it's running some of the more demanding games. So with PlayStation 5, they said that they've worked a lot on the cooling to make sure that the system not only runs as cool as possible, but so that hopefully the cooling isn't so loud as to get in the way of the audio experience of a game. But yeah, I mean, there is ventilation, not only in the back, but also if you look at the top here in the front, vents kind of run all the way around the console top and bottom parts right here. And then in the back, it's just all ventilation. It's also possible to see some of the ports on the back, two USB ports, a LAN port, an HDMI port, and a power cable port. And then it is assumed that this right here is an area that allows you to eject where the SSD would go for those who want to expand the storage of the PlayStation 5. It ships with 825 gigabytes, which is not enough, honestly. But they also wanted to keep costs down. But you'll be able to expand that. Sony has confirmed this. It is assumed that this is the tray for that. So that's interesting. And right here, you can also see that on the back of the PS5, it is thin at the top and then thick at the bottom. Whereas on the front here, it is thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom. And well, there's the disk drive here. But if you do get the all digital version, this extra thickness won't be there. And it'll be more of a symmetrical, thinner bottom for the front of the PS5. So that's what you can look forward to. Next up, we have the bottom of the PS5. So you can see right here from the logo that this is the back part of the PS5. This is the front, and it looks like there's maybe some ventilation down here, though ventilation mostly is focused on the back and top and front uh, areas that will never be covered up. But yeah, this shot right here especially highlights the thickness of the PS5. This is a thick boy with three C's, especially if you get the disk drive version that adds this extra bit of thickness to the bottom right corner. But with the kind of hardware that the next generation of consoles is offering, I'm not surprised to see both Series X and PS5 really grow in size. Honestly, I'd prefer to have a larger console if it just means better cooling so that there's no throttling with GPU and CPU and so that again, there isn't that loud distracting noise, especially with PS4 Pro. Now right here we have a look at the bottom of the PS5 and how the stand will work there. If you want to place your PlayStation 5 horizontally, I guess this is kind of how the stand will attach. And then scrolling further down, you can see the bottom of the PS5 and the stand separately. And there's this kind of latch area here that is seemingly placed on the back of the PS5 if you stand it uh, horizontally. I'll be honest with you, given how much space the PS5 is bound to take up, I think standing it up vertically is probably the best thing to do if you really want to save some space on your shelf. Though, you know, it's up to every individual. It's good to have the option of vertical and horizontal, as always. Here's a closer look at the stand and some of the protrusions that will seemingly go in line with the PS5's uh, exterior design so that it fits properly, whether it's propped up horizontally or vertically. This is the bottom of the stand. You can see some uh, rubber uh, elements on the bottom here to ensure that it doesn't slip and slide. Closer look at the controller. We've got the dimensions here and it gives us a good look at both the front here and uh, the back. So the back is pretty minimalistic and looks very similar to, if I may show you right here, the back of a uh, PS4 controller. It looks very similar, like a little a hair thicker maybe here and there across the board especially if you look at it from the front. But generally, I get the sense that it's going to feel very similar to the uh, DualShock 4 
this dual sense controller obviously it's going to have additional features like haptic feedback adaptive triggers there's some different design elements but for the most part they're certainly drawing heavily from what already works the dual shock 4 which i think is a fantastic controller uh, so they don't have to fix too much what already ain't broken. Last but not least, here we have a clearer look at the bottom of the PS5. This is the thicker back and then the thinner front and then the disk drive taking up a bit of space down here. Uh, there's this circular protrusion here that kind of looks like a button, but I don't surmise it's actually a button. Or if it is, it's nothing too important considering that the bottom portion here will be covered up if you stand the console up vertically it'll be straight up inaccessible so i don't imagine this actually is anything super important other than that though not much else to see here i think the most compelling aspect of these photos are shots of the back in particular which we haven't seen much of so here it is again again with all the ventilation and the potential ssd port here and the various other ports that you'd expect from a console like this i'm also noticing now that this photo actually shows you how the stand the latch there actually grips onto the back of the playstation 5 for a horizontal layout and then the front right here which uh, is a, a little dark, the lighting isn't great, but just seeing these photos gives you a better idea for how they'll actually look when you actually get your hands on a PS5 and put it somewhere in your house versus the renders that are so clean and kind of uh, made to look like the most ideal uh, visuals for the console. This actually is a more realistic kind of look at the PS5 when it finally ships. I do think the poor lighting probably makes the console look a little uglier than it would actually be when you actually look at it with your own two eyes. And the fact that it's not turned on means that there is not that blue LED hue surrounding the front of the console that actually looks really cool i think but still a pretty good look at the ps5 proper its dimensions you get a good reference point for just how big this console is actually gonna end up being it's gonna be a thick boy all right but again if it keeps the console cool and quiet I'm all for it. So yeah, for those who are curious about the look of the PS5 and really want to get a 360 degree look at it, these photos are one way to do that. I hope uh, this proved to be useful for those curious about PlayStation 5. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on PlayStation 5's design. Do you like what they're going for here? Also, are you going to pre-order PlayStation 5? Did you actually manage to do so amidst the chaos? Drop a comment and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out